Hello everyone! Welcome to today's uh, isolation lesson. I'm just going to ping a quick comment over here. Um, but let me know that you're here. Give me a hello in the comments. Just whilst I do this. Um, let's pin you. Do say hello. Let me know where you are in the world. There we go. Cool. Hello, hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Who is with me today? Who is joining me for today's very special street food edition of uh, the Spice Club's isolation lessons? Give me a hello. Let me know where in the world you're tuning in from. Hi, Amanda. Hi, Linda. I am here broadcasting. Hi, Mum. Good to see you. Uh, I am broadcasting, I like to say broadcasting because it makes it sound very official um, and that I'm not in my living room. Um, I am here uh, in Birmingham which is looking a little bit wet today. Hi Marie, welcome back from Stoke on Trent. Um, hi Dad, Mum and Dad always here, full force, family support. Hey Emma, how's it going? Hi Dina, hola. Alf, nice to see you. We'll just get a few more people logged on and then we'll get started. Let me know, first time joining me in today's isolation lesson, um, or have you been to, have you been joining me from day one? Who's been here um, from uh, day one? I wanna know, or week one, I should say rather. How many classes have you done with me? So if it's the first time, or have you done a couple? Let me know um, in the comments. How many classes have you done with me? And if maybe you've not done an isolation lesson with me, maybe you've just actually been to a cookery class, let me know as well. Have you been to um, Manchester cookery class or have you been to a Birmingham cookery class? Have you done a private class or maybe you've done a supper club? How do I know you? Hey Steve, tuning in from Royal Leamington Spa. Howard, good to see you, Rob. Oh, I see some familiar faces. Hi Hazel, tuning in from Whitefield. Hi Graham, standing next to his new, his new favourite toy, fantastic. Jane, well, welcome back. Christine and Mike, hello from the Swiss Alps. Amazing. Oh, cool. Lots of you um, joining back from a few weeks. Andrew's is your fourth class. Anyone can be, can anyone beat Andrew? Has anyone been here for all six of my classes? Jane's done five. Matt, this is your fourth class. Amazing. Julie, you did our supper club in Manchester. Amazing. Nice to see you again. Hi, Amanda. You've tuned in. Um, from Wales, is it? Brett's from Daventry. Hi, Caroline from Presswich. How you doing? Cool. We'll just get a few more people in and then we'll get to the party started. Marie, you've been on them from week two, but you've cooked all of them. Amazing. And yes, you've been to a cookery class. Hi, Dad. Mick, Jackie. Okay, Jackie's done all six of the classes. Amazing. I know, I think Dina has as well. Steve's done all six, but two on catch up. I'll let it slide, I'll let it slide, no worries. Uh, but you have cooked all six. Hazel's done all six. Amazing, guys, I'm appreciating the love. I feel like a lot of you have, have kind of um, come back um, every week. That's amazing. And if you are watching for the first time as well, welcome, hello, my name is Monica, um, and I will do a very quick intro on who I am in just a second. Hi, Silas. Tuning in from Chennai in India. Good to have you. Hi, Rachel. Welcome back. Hi, Abita. Tuning in from Delhi, I think. Good to see you. Hope you're all well over there. Nice. We've got a whole international vibe going. I'm loving this. Absolutely loving it. Keith, your fifth class. Well, whether you have been to uh, following along with my isolation lessons or it's the first time that you're watching me, Hello, a very warm welcome. Good afternoon. I hope it's a, a little bit better in terms of weather where you are today. I'm in Brum um, and it's looking pretty um, miserable and rainy and cloudy here. Um, so I hope the weather's better where you are. Um, I'll just tell you a little bit about who I am if you do not know who I am and maybe you've just been and um, you've seen this on social media. Uh, my name is Monica uh, and I run the Spice Club as you can see, um, uh, which is an Indian cookery school and a supper club. And the, the ethos for the Spice Club has always been to showcase home style regional Indian cookery. Um, so we're talking recipes, you know, that have been passed down in my family for many years. We're talking regional Indian recipes from all over India. Um, and for me, it's always been about showcasing proper Indian food and trying to make it easy for people because 
for me, you know, I find it fairly easy because I've been surrounded by Indian cookery my whole life um, and I have eaten it and I've cooked it professionally and personally for many years. Um, but I appreciate that a lot of people really enjoy eating Indian food, but they they find the element of cooking it very, very um, daunting. It's like this big task and there's lots of ingredients and it can be, you know, seem like this big, big um, task. So I'm here to really break everything down. That's what I do in my classes. Um, and I really try and make cooking Indian food as easy as possible for you without sacrificing on the flavour. All right. So um, if you like the sound of that, you're in the right place. Um, uh, Martin, you just asked about the recipe. Um, you can use cumin seeds instead. So let's talk about today's recipe. Um, we are making a um, Bombay masala sandwich. So wherever you are in the world, I'm going to transport you to the roadside of Mumbai uh, or Bombay, old school <laughs> name for it. Um, and even the people in Mumbai right now cannot enjoy the street food outside because everyone's on lockdown. So we're going to pretend that, you know, we are all on the roadside of Mumbai. It's obviously a lot more quiet in our living rooms and kitchens um, compared to the roadsides of India. This recipe is amazing. First of all, it tastes amazing. Second of all, um, it's actually three recipes in one that I'm teaching you today. Value for money, guys. It's what I'm providing for you. Um, and I'll break everything down for you. And also, it's just a real crowd pleaser. So let me talk to you about it if you don't know what I'm talking about when I say Bombay masala sandwich. We start off with some beautiful, crispy, crunchy bread. We're going to toast that. We're going to layer it with a spicy, fresh coriander mint chili chutney. Um, then we're going to put on some spicy turmeric and mustard seed mustard seed potatoes. We're going to top it with red onions, tomatoes, cheese, plenty of cheese, um, and then more coriander mint chutney, and then another piece of toasted crispy bread on top. So you get the crunch factor, it's soft and spicy, and it's delicious. That's all you really need to know. So if you like the sound of that, please put a big Y in the comments, or a yes, or give me a thumbs up. I want to know, what do we think of the Bombay masala sandwich. How does that sound? Because to me, I purposely not eating much today so I can gorge in on <laughs> the uh, masala sandwich later on because it's a very, very filling sandwich. So yeah, I'm feeling the love. Let me know if that sounds like something you want to cook up. Cool. And also let me know in the comments, are you, co are you cooking today or are you just watching? Um, so I know how many of you are uh, are out um, with all of your ingredients and your kits in your kitchen. Um, and if you're not, you're just chilling out and want to watch and cook this later on, that's absolutely fine. This recipe video will be available for you uh, on the Facebook page for uh, a little while. So yeah, sounds good, doesn't it? Uh, cool, I think you guys will like the sound of it. Amazing. So let's get cooking. First thing that we're going to do, uh, I mentioned a coriander and mint chutney. We're going to make that first. So um, I did ask you to have a blender um, or something that you can get a nice smooth chutney in. I know Chris has a wonderful Thermomix. Um, I'm using my Blendtec. Something with a blade, something like that would be perfect. A chopper isn't really going to get you a smooth chutney. Um, so yeah, you want something that's going to be sort of blending to make a nice thick smooth sauce. This chutney, once you know how to make it, you can use it for a dipping sauce for so many different things. It's a really, really delicious chutney. Uh, and in India, the word chutney doesn't mean what it means here in, in England. So um, we kind of call all sauces and dips uh, chutney. Um, Amanda is yet to be convinced. Sounds too much like a chip butty. Potato in bread sounds wrong. Ah, oh, just wait. Wait and see, Amanda. That's all I'm going to say. Um, yeah, it's it's so, so much more than a chip butty. And chip butties are good, but um, no, this is another level of sandwich. So first thing that we're going to do in the blender, um, I've asked you to have a very small onion. Mine's very small, it's probably about 70 grams or so. And I want you to peel that and just chop it for me. And we're going to go straight into the blender. And also, if you could just let me know that everyone can hear me and see me um, and clearly, uh, and you can see what I'm doing here. Just give me a quick thumbs up or let me know that you can in the comments, that'd be fab. Hi Robert, welcome back. Um, so yeah, you are just going to very rough chunks of onions into the blender. So if you want to use a chopping board, you can do. So just rough chunks straight into um, your blender. Lee, yeah, not wrong with the chip butty. I completely agree. 
Uh, next thing, this is optional, but I'm also going to pop in a garlic clove. This is optional, you don't have to do this. So onion in there, uh, roughly ch rough chunks and garlic clove in there. Next thing that I'm going to do is pop in apple. So um, ideally, um, I would go for a Granny Smith because it's got lovely tartness and tanginess, but I couldn't find any, so um, I've just got a Braeburn. This isn't too sweet, which is quite good. Um, so um, I've washed it, I'm going to leave the peel on there, and we're just going to do rough chunks of our apple. If you are adding it, it's optional, into your blender. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to, again, if you want to use chopping board, you can do. Interestingly, um, I don't know if anyone has family in India, but um, I have my wonderful grandma in India, in Jaipur. And um, <laughs> whenever I used to, I was, when I was very young and I started to learn how to cook, I used to go and then go to the kitchen and it just, she would ask me to help her chop things, but she wouldn't have a chopping board. So I'd go and get the knife. And I'd be like, okay, and these chop these onions, where's the chopping board? And she just doesn't, she never had a chopping board. You'd always just cut with your, using your thumb. Has anyone ever seen that before? So now I, I'm very used to that now. And they have these sort of special knives, this is from India. So you don't, um, you don't cut yourself. But yeah, <laughs> just a little tidbit of information there. So onions, uh, garlic, uh, apple, and then we're gonna go in with chilies. Now, this sandwich should be spicy, a little bit sweet, a bit tangy, crunchy. And when we add the cheese to the sandwich, and obviously we've got the potatoes, that kind of mildens everything down. So the chutney really needs to sing and shout. And for me, I want to make it quite spicy. I like my chutney quite spicy. So I'm probably, these are quite spicy chilies as well. I've got for thin, thin green chilies. I'm going to put four in, but if you don't like your, um, your chutneys or you don't like things too hot then maybe just put about two in taste it and see if you want any more but i'm going full full um uh force in terms of my heat okay um hi rohit hi da marcus peter welcome back nice to see some familiar names um in here we're now going to pop in lime juice so you can use lemon or lime and i'm going to put in a whole lime so it's got that lovely freshness in the chutney Everyone um, in India kind of makes this chutney slightly differently, um, but this is one of my favourite ways of making it because you have that sort of sweet, fruity element from the apple, the freshness from the lime. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous chutney. Okay, so I'm now going to ask you to pop in roughly around 60 ml of water, so that's about a quarter of a cup of water. And now what we're going to do is just make a very quick paste. So I'm not gonna add in my coriander yet or anything else yet because if I make a paste of this now, it'll make everything else, uh, it'll be easier for everything else to blend. So I don't have a lid, I've, <laughs> I've broke my lid. So this is my lid. It works, it works. And you're gonna just put this on high um, spin so this gets nice and smooth. I might need to add a little bit of more water, but I'll see how I, I go. So just get this on a high, and we're looking for this to turn into a nice smooth paste. Perfect. So I've just got like a sort of uh, mulchy kind of paste there, not particularly appetizing right now, but it just helps when I add all of the rest of the ingredients in. Okay, so now we're going in with the star ingredient, which is fresh coriander. If you don't have fresh coriander, you could use just mint if you like. I'm just gonna put stems in as well. Never, ever, ever throw away the stems. Denise, you put in about a quarter cup of water, which is about 60 mils of water. This is optional. You don't have to put mint in. You could just put mint in or just put coriander in. I'm gonna put both in. So I've got about 20 mint leaves as well. Super, super fresh. Does anyone grow coriander and mint? We had a really good gardening chat going last week. Let me know in the comments um, if anyone does actually grow coriander and mint. Um, also going to add in some salt, so roughly around a level teaspoon, and I'm going to put a pinch more in, maybe about a quarter teaspoon more, that was a bit more than a pinch. <laughs> you guys watch me, you know what I'm doing. Um, Brett, you're allergic to lime and lemon, you could also use mango powder, uh, which adds tartness, that's very, very tart. Um, you could use citric acid. I'm not sure what, what you're allergic to with the lemon and lime, so maybe citric acid wouldn't work for you, but certainly mango powder would be absolutely fine. 
Uh, cool, a lot of you are growing coriander and mint. Shirley cilantro, that's what they call it in Florida, don't they, coriander. So after your salt's gone in, you're also going to add in, this is optional, but if you've got a good blender, you might be able to get away with this. But this is desiccated coconut. Now, I only really add coconut to this when I'm making the chutney for this um, purpose of making a sandwich, because what this does is it helps to thicken up your chutney and make it nice and smooth and thick, because you do not want... Um, a sort of uh, a, a chutney that's runny and um, it's very liquidy um, because the onion will continue to release a bit of water so we want to really thicken it up so that stays nice and saucy and thick so we're probably putting about three tablespoons of the desiccated coconut in here and we're going to put this back on the lid and then this is pretty much done I might need a bit more water I'll just see um, how well my blender does I have added the mint already Deepika, you grow mint in your garden. Uh, so Emma, after the salt, I did a teaspoon and a quarter of salt. I added in about three tablespoons of desiccated coconut, which is optional. But just a really good tip for thickening up your, um, your chutney. Have, I have already put the salt and lime in Charlotte, yes. Okay, gonna go in again. <laughs> on the thick side this is what it looks like right now oh, maybe I should do this way I'm just going to go a bit more like a smidge of water a smidge of a technical measurement by the way when I say a smidge I mean about a tablespoon or two um everything's in here D coriander mint lime onion apple salt desiccated coconut before I add my water I'm just going to add uh, just give it a quick taste Mm, that tastes really good, really, really nice. So let me just add in a couple more tablespoons of water just to thin it out slightly. I don't think it needs more than that. And then I'm gonna go in again. Whoop, okay, so give it a quick whiz. Great. Right, beautiful. My um, chutney is looking beautiful and smooth. I know this is a big um, jug for the amount of chutney I've made, but that's what you're looking for. It should not be runny. It should be nice and thick. So yeah, Rachel, just to recap for you, in here I have put in onion, a very small onion. Um, I put in a whole apple. Um, I put in about four chilies. Mine are quite spicy. Um, I then popped in a little bit of water, about 60 mils, blended it, and then added in coriander, it was a large handful of coriander, about 20 leaves of mint, and one garlic clove, you're testing me now, um, about a quarter, uh, a teaspoon and a quarter of salt, and uh, a whole lime, and then I added a smidge of water right at the end, so a quarter of a cup and a smidge of water, which is about a couple of tablespoons. Hi, the Beige Bayer, how are you doing? I got my cousins tuning in from India. How's the weather where you are in Gujarat? Okay, so gorgeous, gorgeous, beautiful coriander and mint chutney. Give me a like if yours looks like this. Let me know. Hi, put a Y in the... Um, the comments for me let you let me know that you're here uh dina you've already tried your chutney yeah it tastes really good it's a bit of sweetness sourness saltiness chili in here it, it, it smells absolutely amazing charlotte i put the whole lime in okay um so yeah vitamixes are fantastic this is a blend tech i actually got this from costco um but yeah uh, a vitamix would work perfectly for this so i'll just pop this on the side for now and then we're going to get started on our potatoes, okay, which is very exciting. So the coriander and mint chutney is one recipe that you've now nailed. 
Um, so Jackie, if you don't have any coconut in, you can um, add in uh, more coriander, you can add in um, soaked cashew nuts, um, and that will also help to thicken up your sauce, or so if you soak um, almonds, anything like that, any type of nut, you soak it for about 10 minutes in hot water and add it in with your chutney when you're blending it. It just helps to make a really lovely smooth and thick um, chutney. Okay, so just little tips. Uh, one of my uh, friend's mums actually also used to add in bread to help thicken it up as well. Yeah, it should do, Caroline. Yeah, it should work in a Nutribullet. Is anyone using a Nutribullet right now and how are they doing, how are they getting on? with their chutney. So quite a few of you are with me right now. So the next thing I want to do is talk about potatoes. So chutney's done. This keeps really well in the fridge, good good week or two. You can also freeze this if you've made too much, but um, I guarantee this um, on a cheese sandwich, it's absolutely delicious. Okay, let's talk about potatoes. So I asked you if you could do, um, to already have your potato um, uh, cooked, Ian, Ginger's going in later on. Becky used Nutribullet and it worked great, fantastic. So um, yeah, potatoes, I've asked you to already cook yours. I have already cooked mine and peeled them. Um, and I did mine in the microwave. Did anyone do the sukkah alu recipe with me in week one? Um, I showed you how I microwave my potatoes in a bag, pierce a hole, tie it up in the microwave. I did four potatoes for about um, eight or nine minutes this afternoon. I've already peeled them and I've already um, mashed most of them. So I just used a fork to mash these potatoes. So I want you to do that now. If you haven't peeled them, if you could go ahead and peel your potatoes and get your fork and give the potatoes a really good mash for me, okay? So, um, yeah, really good way of cooking potatoes is in the microwave because A, they stay nice and dry, especially when we're making um, potatoes for something like a street food dish like we're doing today, something for um, stuffing or a sandwich. You um, really want to keep your potatoes dry. So doing it in the microwave or steaming them really helps to keep them dry instead of boiling them. Um, and yeah, I just used red potatoes or you can use desiree potatoes, something that's quite fluffy. So just going to mash that down and also whilst you're doing this just give them a, a spread out. Spread your potatoes out because we're going to actually add the seasoning to the potato whilst it's on the plate. Okay and the more we spread it out the more even we can um, evenly we can distribute the seasoning. Okay so my potatoes are looking delicious. Well they're not looking delicious they're looking nicely mashed. They will look delicious and in just a few minutes, okay. Let's pop this on the side. How are we getting on, guys? Are the potatoes peeled, mashed? Rob, you did the same in the microwave. It's really easy, isn't it? Um, yeah, we're getting there, fabulous. So easy in the microwave, and um, it just means less washing up. And for those of you that have been to my classes, you know I'm all about less washing up, okay? So that is what I, um, I massively advocate. Um, whilst you guys are getting to where I am, I'm going to bring over my little tabletop cooker. Whoop. Okay, my living room has now transformed into my kitchen. I've had to remove, we had a coat stand in here and I had to move that out of the way because <laughs> my coat, I was going out and smelling like murg masala and, you know, sake alu, just, you know, a waft of spice just heading wherever I go. So. Yeah, I have um, now removed the coat rack from, um, from the living room. It does not belong here. Okay, so let me know that you guys are here. Rachel, it's a good tip, isn't it? Potatoes in the microwave. Give me a thumbs up. Let me know that you are with me. Poppy, yes. Uh, potatoes mashed. If you can write that in the comments for me, um, then I know that you are with me. And we're going to start talking about seasoning and getting our... Uh, spike our potatoes nicely spiced. Ah, okay. So potatoes are mashed on the plate, nicely spread out, and we're going to start seasoning. So first thing is salt, everyone. So um, I'm only going to put in about half a teaspoon of salt. I'm going to use my fingers. It just gives me a better idea of um, sprinkling over. I'm going to use what we call a chef's pinch. So whatever I can get between my four fingers and a thumb. I'm going to start at the top of this plate. Actually, I've got one end of the potatoes rather and just work my way over. I think a half teaspoon 
or maybe just shy of half a teaspoon works perfectly just to make sure you evenly season the potatoes okay lovely once your salt's on there we're going to add in a quarter teaspoon of my favorite spice one of my favorite spices haldi which is turmeric, which obviously is going to add gorgeous colour to your potatoes. Um, so when you open the sandwich up, you get this gorgeous sort of layer of yellow and it's, it's really, um, really lovely. So just about a quarter teaspoon of haldi. Next thing is a little bit of chilli powder. Now you can omit chilli powder if you don't like the spicy. Um, or you can use paprika as well, instead of rather. Um, and I'm going to go again, just a quarter teaspoon of... Papri um, chili powder. I like mine very spicy. For those of you who've been um, uh, watching along, um, you know that I always add extra chili in because I like it hot. Um, Brendan, uh, the hand blender, is that for the chutney that you're talking about? Because um, yes, you could do if you if you were talking about that. Next thing that we're going to do is add in some of this, which I mentioned before to someone who mentioned that they are allergic to lemon and lime. Um, this is sun-dried mango powder. The mangoes, when they are picked, are um, are really raw and, and green and sour. And when it's dried down into a powder, um, it's very, very tart and adds gorgeous flavour. So very, completely optional. If you're using um, amchured mango powder, you want a quarter of a teaspoon. Um, if you are using lime or lemon juice, maybe you just want half a teaspoon of lemon or lime juice, okay? Uh, people's potatoes are mashed. Are you all following me with the spices? So everything's on here. I'm now going to get my fork back and give it all a good mix. Just mix this up. Or you can use your fingers, which I am going to do instead. Using your fingers is so much better. You just can really evenly mix everything together. The reason why I'm adding the spices now is that it's just very, very easy once it's Oops, once it's spread out on a plate as opposed to in your pan. Um, so give this a really good mix. Ah, it feels really nice and soft, nice and squidgy. <laughs> Not an appetizing adjective, but it's, it's quite nice and therapeutic. I could do this for hours, just massage these potatoes. So yeah, you're basically looking for these potatoes to look sort of yellowy, I might have gone overkill on my chilli powder, so mine look a little bit orangey, but that's okay. As long as everything is really mixed through, that's what you're looking for here. So this is going to be another dish. This potato dish that you're going to learn now, um, you, um, you can actually use this dish um, as a stuffing for so many things. You could use this as a parata stuffing, so um, you can use it for so many different things. Steve, you have put the chaat masala instead of the amchur. Okay, don't add any amchur in um, and just ch check your um, seasoning, just taste it. It should be fine, just don't add any extra salt in, okay? Because um, chaat masala does have black salt in there. So just make sure it's not too salty. I'm going to give this a quick taste. Salt fine, um, everything's perfect, so that's lovely, okay? So, um, we're now going to cook our potatoes. Just give my hands a quick wash. So I've got a pan on here. Um, I'm gonna just add a little bit of oil to this. And we're going to temper some mustard seeds, okay? So I'm roughly putting in a couple of tablespoons of oil. And we're gonna get the oil quite hot because we're gonna add in these wonderful mustard seeds. And this is gonna add the most beautiful flavor to the potatoes, okay? Um, well then, and I already have this ready, I have ginger paste, garlic paste, and chopped coriander already ready. So I did pop that on the ingredients list, but if you haven't chopped or grated, you might want to do that first before we put the mustard seeds in the pan, otherwise um, your spices will burn. So always make sure you have the next sort of ingredient at the ready, okay? Um, so I'll give this a few more seconds. If you don't have mustard seeds, you can use cumin seeds instead. Um, so don't feel like, you know, you have to have every single spice in. There's loads of things that you can sub out. Yes, they will, Shirley. Yeah, you can use yellow ones instead. The black ones are the most pungent ones. You have the most sort of flavour coming out of black ones. But you can use brown ones as well. Yellow ones too. All right, so when your oil is beginning to smoke, and mine is just on the verge of, that's when you want to add in the mustard seeds, okay? So I'm going to put in a good spoon 
a good teaspoon of mustard seeds. They should crackle straight away, which mine are doing. I'm not going to mess around. I'm going to add in my coriander seeds, my coriander, my ginger, and my garlic all at once. And we're now going to give this a really good mix. So it's on a low heat, low to medium heat. I just want to cook out my ginger, the rawness of my ginger and the rawness of my garlic. Uh, Becky, um, so if you're using ground cumin, you can add it directly into the potato mixture. I wouldn't add it into the oil, okay? So just omit it if you don't have it. Um, yeah, I agree, um, Susan, I love that sound as well, that crackle of the mustard seeds. So ginger and garlic, just smelling amazing right now. Um, and just make sure you're constantly mixing because you do not want to burn the ginger, the garlic and the mustard because it will turn bitter. So this has had two or three minutes, not even, and everything looks beautifully cooked. I basically just want to make sure that ginger garlic are no longer raw. I'm going to add my potato in. And I'm actually going to, again, make sure this is a very low heat. In a second, I'm going to turn this off. And now you're going to just, I want to bring this a bit closer to you guys. Sorry, I feel like I'm a bit far away. Um, I'm going to mix in my potatoes with this ginger and garlic and mustard seed tempering. Such an easy um, way of just making a very, very easy potato dish. If anyone's ever had doses, this is somewhat similar to the stuffing that they put in doses. Um, they use curry leaves as well in that and some asafoetida. So just give this a really good mix. I like using something like a, a paddle or a spatula like this because you can really mix well. And you can use, you can do this in a frying pan, you can do it in a normal pan, um, whatever you've got in really. How are we getting on guys? This is such a delicious um, dish on its own. If you ever, uh, if you join me for the, the um, um, the cheese, chili cheese parata recipe. Um, if you didn't want to put the cheese in, you could put this and make a spicy potato parata instead and it's absolutely delicious. Turn off my heat. I'm just going to give it a quick taste and see if it needs anything. Not enough people taste their food when I'm watching people on TV. A lot of chefs do, of course, in their kitchens, but um, I think it's really important to taste your food as you go along for seasoning. Mmm, it was really good. So simple, so tasty. I am just gonna add a tiny bit more salt because I left my food slightly on the sharp side. Charlotte, can you please just run through what you did with the mustard seeds? Of course, no problem. So oil, get that nice and hot. As soon as the oil goes in, you are going to add in your mustard seeds. They're gonna crackle. Then I added in a clove of garlic grated. I added in about a centimeter of ginger grated and about three tablespoons of coriander, fresh, just chopped. Mix that together for a few seconds. And, um, and um, yeah, once that's ready, just pop your potatoes in and give it a mix. Um, Mosaji, namaste. <laughs> my, my uncle is watching in Gujarat. Namaste, keseo. <laughs> okay, lovely. So once your potatoes are done, you're going to put them on a plate because you want them to cool down. And as we spread it out the potatoes earlier, we're going to do the same thing now. So just pop it onto a plate and spread that out. So by the time it comes to actually cooking your sandwich and layering the sandwich rather, I should say, um, these potatoes are nicely cooled down. Otherwise, it, be it becomes a bit difficult to um, make and assemble the sandwich. So can you see the way that I'm spreading it? around <laughs> thanks rachel i think that was a, a home sense um jobby just the elephants with the crowns on is what did it for me <laughs> big fan of elephants okay so ooh, if you've tasted your potato by the way how good does it taste have you tried it this is such a beautiful dish on its own um you could use this as, if anyone's got puff pastry at home you could make little samosas with puff pastry and these spicy potatoes on the inside absolutely delicious you could do like vegetarian uh, braided um rolls with this you can um like make the parasas like i said so many different ways of, of using this wonderful spicy potato dish so if you are with me um can you pop in the comments yes potatoes done 
Ready? Are you ready? Are you ready for the Bombay Masala Sandwich is the question. I'm going to pop this to the side and I'm going to bring back my another frying pan. Okay, so potatoes are done. Let me know if you are on the same page as me. Um, Dom, you could totally make a Cornish pie with it. That sounds absolutely amazing. I really do like the sound of that. Maybe a bit of spinach in there. Maybe some cubes of toasted paneer. See where I'm going with this. Spud sorted. Lee, you're nearly there. Becky, you're ready. Fab, thank you very much, guys, for letting me know. Ian's ready. Lovely. Okay, brilliant. So, if you are ready, you can see you've already made your chutney that you can use for so many things. You've already made your potato that you can use um, for so many different types of things, dishes. Now you're going to actually compile everything together and we're going to make the Bombay sandwich. So if you have your um, bread at the ready, if you could get that out now. Hi Patrick, how you doing? Patrick sent me some photos of, um, Patrick's been to quite a few of my Birmingham cooking classes. So shout out to Patrick. And he sent me some pictures of some amazing looking homemade paneer that you did, which looked brilliant. How did it taste, Patrick? You gotta let me know. Okay, I keep disappearing by the way because I've I've popped all of my um, stuff behind me. Where you can't see, where it's a massive mess behind me and everything looks nice and clean here in this window. Um, yeah, hi Peter, how you doing? How are the pizzas going? So, um, I've got this pan here. This is a chapata pan. You can also use a frying pan. It doesn't really matter. Um, ideally non-stick, doesn't have to be. Um, I sometimes do it in a cast iron pan that works quite well. Brown bread's absolutely fine. Sourdough bread, yeah, absolutely. Play around with what you have. There's no hard and fast rules here. I've gone for your full fat white bread, thick slice. <sighs> it's the good stuff. It is the good stuff. I very rarely have this in the house, to be honest. Um, but um, Mumbai Sandwich called for this. So I was like, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to go all out, okay? So um, <laughs> got my uh, two pieces of bread here, okay? And um, you want to make sure that your butter is um, nice and soft and melted. Otherwise, it's, we're going to use it to spread on our sandwich here. So just make sure that you have that already nicely softened and at room temperature. I'm just going to make some space very quickly. Um, and we're going to get started. I already have everything pre-sliced in terms of our toppings as well. How are we getting on, guys? Are you with me? Are you in the same place as me? Let me know. How are you getting on? Ah, oh, Paula, you are going to do it tomorrow. Awesome. The kids want you to do gima as well. Amazing. Are you doing that with lamb uh, and peas? I love gima. Okay, so um, we have got our white bread here. I'm just going to layer one of them with some butter. Just one for now. We'll do the other one later on. Already smells incredible and we haven't even made the sandwich yet. So, butter one side on. It's Friday. I'm not counting calories, as you know, on Friday. I never do. So I'm going all for complete full fat butter. All right. Can you guys see me okay? Howard, you just wipe chilli in your eye. No. I probably should have mentioned that you might want to wash your hands if you do with chilies. Go and wash your eyes out immediately. I've done that so many times and I've been cooking with chilies for years and I still don't learn. So I feel your pain. Next thing, guys. So the first thing I'm going to do is pop in um, our coriander um, chutney. OK, so um, I'm going to do maybe about a teaspoon on each side, so top and bottom. I've only buttered one side for now, by the way, just so you know. Just use a palette knife and just spread that all over. I'm probably actually going to add a bit more. So maybe actually a teaspoon and a half of chutney is a better shout just to make sure that you can really spread enough chutney because this the chutney is what makes the dish. It really makes your sandwich just come to life and it works amazingly well with uh, cheese. My grandma, she used to make this chutney. My grandma, my dad's mum, she um, used to live in Whitefield actually and she used to make this chutney and for lunch, maybe about three or four times a week, she would put chutney on one side and then tomato ketchup on the other side. 
and cheese in the middle and that was it she used to have this kind of coriander mint and tomato ketchup chutney um sandwich rather and yeah that was my grandma's favorite lunch which uh, <laughs> i always remember that but it, it works really well believe it or not okay so um really put a generous amount of the green chutney on both sides do not hold back you really need to make sure that you have enough green chutney on there so every part of the bread is covered because the main flavor is going to go from this bread uh, lauren you haven't missed much we've buttered one side and i've turned it over and then we've put our coriander and mint chutney on two sides okay so i've only buttered one piece of bread for now and turned it over next thing that's going to go on is our delicious potato spicy potato layer okay so i'm just going to spoon on and we're going to be spreading this all over so roughly i'm dropping on my food today um enough to make a decent layer on each side so i'm just putting it in the middle and then i'm going to use a palette knife to spread this all over so um this potato mix actually will make more than um, two sandwiches today so you'll have a little bit left over just so you know so if you do want to experiment and stuff it with different things you totally can do so just spread the potato mixture all over I think I'm gonna have a little bit more over here again just don't um, be too scared about making sure all edges are really well covered I'm gonna go and do the same thing on this side Yeah, no problem, Karen. Um, that's absolutely fine. I'm always worried that I'm going to lose internet halfway through a live. I haven't done that yet, thankfully, but you never know. <laughs> At which point I feel like you'll just be there with your sandwich being like, what happens now? Uh, Rachel, it's similar to the, the kind of potato mix that we put in our stuffed paratas. Everyone makes their paratas a bit differently. Um, sometimes we don't even temper spices. We just add... Um, spice powders to our um, potato mix with the paratas. We don't kind of make it so flavorful. Um, but yeah, this is a really good way of, of making a really delicious potato parata. Yeah, you could just eat it with a spoon. I agree, Louise. Okay, so you have your coriander um, mint chutney on there. You have your potato mixture on there. Um, and now we're gonna go in with um, a little bit of cheese, just a little bit. I've got mozzarella. You don't have to, um, um, I've got mozzarella and cheddar. So I'm gonna do a little mix. You don't have to use just mozzarella. And I'm only gonna put a tiny bit of cheese for now, just a little bit of cheese for now. Cause we're gonna put most of the cheese on later on. Just a tiny bit of cheese, okay? Next thing I wanna do is add on chart masala. So chart masala, um, uh, Charlotte, no, put it on the other side. Um, chart masala is a really wonderful spice blend that we use on lots of our street food. I'm just going to do a generous pinch. Um, the word chart in Hindi means to lick. So anything that you put chart masala on makes you want to lick your fingers. So it's got things like black salt in there. It's got mango powder. It's got pepper. It's got chili. So it's tangy, tart, spicy, salty all at once. And it's delicious. After the cheese and the chaat masala, and if you do not have chaat masala, just leave it out, okay? You're going to add in your onions. So I've got really nice, round, thin slices of onions, okay? So they're going to go in. And um, the next layer is optional. So we're going to add in tomato. So this is what it looks like so far, red onion, okay? And I'm going to put a tiny bit of tomato. So you don't have to, if you don't like the idea of tomatoes being in cooked in a sandwich i understand that just leave it out okay so i am i like that so i'm gonna pop it in it also adds gorgeous color again um i like my food very spicy so i this is optional i'm gonna add in some green chilies and for my next layer you can also use chili flakes if you like um you don't have to use fresh green chilies um but if you like it hot you can get you know chili flakes chili powder fresh bean chilies I like it super hot, so I'm going to put on, there's probably a couple of chilies worth of chili there, okay? Um, and then we're going to go in with some more cheese, okay? So again, for me, I'm doing a mix of mozzarella, and I'm also going to do a, um, a little bit of cheddar as well. So 
this is the time that I load up with my cheese. So I only put a tiny bit on before, but I'm going, I'm going for it now. I'm really going for it. Um, also, I've just put my pan on to um, heat at a very low temperature, just on the low, just whilst we're finishing off the sandwich. Just make sure it's on a low heat. I will put a little bit of, a little drizzle of oil on my pan as well. Just maybe about a teaspoon or two of oil on there. It is a really good nonstick pan, but I just like to very lightly grease it. Okay, cheese is on there. Now I'm gonna go in again with the chaat masala. So a nice generous sprinkle of chaat masala. This is looking very, very, very loaded and delicious. Okay, and then when you are at this point, we then put the top on. Okay, so I feel like there should be some dramatic music. Dun, 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 dun. Look at that. This is why I said it's a very filling sandwich um, when I was writing the ingredients list out. Okay, so let me know if you are here, guys. And then I'm just going to wait for my um, pan to get nice and hot. And I'll bring that side over to you so you can see it. So I like to use mozzarella and um, cheddar because I like that sort of stringy factor that you get from the mozzarella, but I love that flavour that you get from cheddar as well. So I feel like we are nice and warm on this. Just see if it sizzles. Near, just a little bit longer. And I'm going to just use a, a little brush to spread out my oil a bit more. Oops. I'm being incredibly messy today. <laughs> Okay, so I just put a tiny bit of cheese on there to see um, if it was sizzling in the oil and it is doing, okay? Uh, let me know guys, are you looking like this right now? So pan, getting nice and hot and your beautiful loaded sandwich is looking good. Let me know, pop a Y in the comments for me. Let me know that you're following along and that you are here where I am. Can't um, count how many times I've had this sandwich. Um, it's absolutely delicious. Every time I go to India, I always get this. And wherever you go, whatever street food uh, shop you go to, um, it varies. They have their own kind of little ways of making it theirs. So I can I can hear, I can feel that this is at a low temperature. So butter side down. Okay, this is going down. Can you hear that sizzle? Shh, that's so nice. So the trick here, guys, is to make sure we're going to cook this low and slow. OK, so a good three minutes or so on one side. Um, and then if you have another frying pan or you could put a plate on here with like a couple of jars, something heavy, that's what's going to help us create a nice crisp skin. OK, Jackie, I'm also really hungry. I've had like watermelon to eat today. <laughs> that's it <laughs> because of this. Okay, so we're going to put on a weight. I've got a nice cast iron pan. This is going to help create a lovely crust. It just kind of forces down a little bit of heat. If you ever go to those fancy trendy grilled cheese restaurants, they have like an actual um, cast iron plate with a handle on top, which are quite cool, but I'm not that trendy. And yes, of course, Rachel, you can put it in the Breville toasty machine. Of course you can. Interestingly, okay, last time I went to India, um, I had one of these and this is what they use in India. This is so cool. All right. My pieces of bread are too big for this, but I will show you this one day. This is what they use. Yeah, Rob, Rob you can use a sandwich maker. Um, this is, so what they do is, I got this from Chennai. Um, they put the sandwich in here and then they close it, so sandwich is here, like a sandwich maker, they close it and then they put this on top of the gas hob, so they cook it for like three minutes on one side and then they flip it over and just on top of the gas flame they cook it, so it's just their way of making a, uh, it's, I don't know it's the same as a toasty maker, but it just looks so cool when they were doing it and I was like I have to get one of those, um, so yeah, if you, um, <laughs> if you like the, the way of using a Breville sandwich maker, you can do. And Dina has one too, because you bought one with me. <laughs> we were in Chennai together. Denise, yeah, low heat for now. And whilst this is cooking, we're going to start it on the second sandwich, okay? 
So low and slow, because what you want to do is develop a really nice crisp skin, but you also want to make sure that cheese melts through as well. So we're gonna go low and slow on that. I'm also just gonna get spatula ready, because we're gonna flip it. And <laughs> I'm so sorry, Dave. Um, we're not gonna talk about that. We're not gonna get into that because we're talking about delicious food. We don't want to put anyone off. Um, but I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, I can see a little bit of colour coming through. So yeah, low heat, carry on. We'll give this another minute before we start, um, before we start um, turning it over. I can see that the cheese has just started to melt as well. So another minute or so. Whilst that's happening, we can start on the second sandwich as well. Um, because I've got another mouth to feed, not just mine. Or if I'm feeling even hungrier later on, you know, <laughs> I know that I've got another sandwich waiting for me. So, um, Chutney's going on here. How are we doing, guys? Have you all got your sandwich on the pan or toasty maker? <laughs> Let me know. Are you with me? Yeah? Okay, amazing. Whereabouts in Delhi, uh, whereabouts in India have you been, Dave, by the way? Where did you go? And is there anyone else that's been to India, by the way? Let me know in, in the comments, where else did you go? How was your experience? And how was your experience of the food is what I want to know. Oh, I've got a piece of onion that didn't grind down. Um, I'm very lucky that I have family in all parts of India. North, South, East, West. The last time I was in India, I um, was in Kolkata um, and went to all parts of West Bengal. So that's the east side of India, and um, the food was absolutely amazing. Got to try some absolutely delicious um, proper Bengali food. Okay, so I'm gonna have a quick peek and see the colour of the sandwich. Oh yeah, definitely there. So it's got gorgeous golden colour. I'm now going to butter the other side of this sandwich, okay? So I just didn't want my pan to have a buttery bottom. <laughs> So I'm now going to butter this side and I'm going to turn it over and it should, if you've done it correctly, it should have a gorgeous golden crisp um, bottom, okay? So a little bit of butter. If you want to omit the butter, of course you can do, but from a taste factor, it just makes it take it to the next level, okay? Look at that. Look at the colour on that. That's absolutely beautiful. So perfect, low heat again, another three minutes. And then that's not the end. I'm gonna show you an optional way of making your Bombay sandwich even crispier. If you saw the video of me cutting it and you heard that crunch, I'm gonna show you how I did that. I'm gonna create what we call a cheese skin, okay. Um, oh, some people went to Goa, Jamshedpur, very cool. Oh, wow. Uh, Dom, where in India would you say your most favourite food experience was? Um, I've had many amazing food experiences. Um, I remember one of my most memorable was when I must have been about 14 or 15. My mum and I and my brother um, were in Jaipur and we were staying at my grandma's house and we were very hungry and we went out for um, some food and there was this place called, well, it was, it was an Indian street food shack and it was, they sold Indo-Chinese food. So in India, they have this cuisine called Indo-Chinese, where it's essentially Indi Chinese food mixed with Indian flavours and it's delicious. Um, and uh, <laughs> we went to the street food cart and we ordered a portion of um, Hakka noodles and mine had chicken in it. And we got this bowl and they said, how spicy do you want it? And I said, yeah, have it spicy. Took it into this bowl and had one forkful of these noodles. And at first I was like, oh, it's delicious. And then about 20 seconds in, I could just feel my eyes tearing up. And then streams of water, just floods of tears. It was so hot, but it was so good. So I had to carry on eating. My mum and my brother, they stopped eating way before me. And they were like, Monica, chill out carried on eating and eating. It was like, it's so good, but it's so painful. So yeah, that was probably my most um, memorable experience um, in, in eating outside in India. 
But otherwise, just going to family's homes and enjoying the food that they cook is also an amazing idea. Lauren, yeah, of course you can build these now and cook them later on. Just leave them out of room temperature. Um, Goa, Sri Lanka, amazing. Well, that sounds really good. The food in Sri Lanka is so different, actually, to India, even though they use a lot of the same ingredients. Um, looking good. I'm going to give this a few more minutes. Well, just maybe about one more minute. Um, on this potato, um, this sandwich, I'm actually just going to potato one side. So you can make this a less heavy sandwich by just doing the potato on one side as opposed to two, just so you know. I'll flatten this out a little bit more. And then I'm going to add on my cheese and my chaat masala. This is a really fun uh, recipe to make with kids. Um, you know, kind of get them involved with grating the cheese, mashing the potatoes, things like that. And also just kind of introduce them to spices as well. Um, yeah, so how are we looking, guys? Have you guys got onto that toasty skin, uh, toasty bread on the sandwich? Let me know. Um, how about you, Dan? Have you been to India? I'm going to go on with tomatoes and onions and a bit more chilli. But it is, it's amazing now. And on Instagram, you can see so many of these Indian street food um, shacks and they've got their own Instagram accounts and they have thousands and thousands of followers. And it's just amazing. I always find it amazing at the speed of which they cook with and um, the variety of Indian street food you can get and how much it changes depending on where you are in India. The north, the south, the east, the west, the cuisine is so different. It's incredible. Okay, I think the sandwich is now done. I'm just going to check the colour, see how we're doing. It's a little bit lighter on the other side, but that's okay. That's the side that we're going to create that lovely cheddar skin on. So let me show you the colour. It's a little bit lighter, and this is the side. If you want to uh, make it even crispier, you can just continue to cook it. But I'm going to leave it where it is, uh, this light golden brown. And I'm going to show you how we're going to create that lovely crisp um cheese skin so pop this sandwich on the side for now so i'm just going to keep it on the side keep this on a low heat make sure you've got a little bit of oil on your pan so i'll bring this closer to you so you can see exactly what i'm doing there we go so my pan's still quite lightly greased i have got my pan on the low to medium heat so if you are enjoying the cheese factor this is where you want to get involved. You want to make this sandwich with the cheese skin. So we're going to pop on, I'm going to go for cheddar as my skin, drop it down and you're almost creating like this little layer of cheese. And you can see it begin to melt, it's supposed to do that. So roughly around the size of the bread, okay? And then I'm going to put it light side down, straight on. Okay, and just let that cook for about a minute with the, the weight on. This is going to create the most delicious, crisp, golden, cheesy skin. It's amazing. It's so tasty. Whenever I make this, I always take it to the next level and do this. I do this with my grilled cheeses and I do it with, um, with this as well. So yeah, I can see that cheese just going lovely and gooey and delicious. So it takes a minute for it to go past that gooey stage and turn into golden, crisp cheesiness. Um, so yeah, if you like your food cheesy, <laughs> go for this, it's amazing. Um, how are we getting on guys? How is your kitchen smelling as well? Yeah, Hazel, um, <laughs> make it when the kids aren't around so it's easier. Yeah, good shout. How are you guys all getting on with the kids by the way? Um, I, I appreciate, I have so much respect for those that we have who are at home in lockdown right now um doing homeschooling and also working and yeah it's yeah loads of admiration for you guys genuinely don't know how you guys are doing it so i'm just going to finish off this sandwich i'm sure most of you are probably way ahead of me because i've been jibber jabbering as per usual so more chaat masala and i want to put this on top so next sandwich is ready to go let's see how we're getting on here so I'm going to bring up the heat ever so slightly. It would help if my gas stove was on. That's the thing with gas stoves, the camping ones, they do sometimes. <laughs> Just decide to turn off from time to time. 
I'm going to give this a little bit more time and then I'm going to get my plate ready as well. So I'm going to show you what it looks like when it's all done. Okay. Now, the sandwich, I always say, is best enjoyed maybe about five minutes after it's cooked. Um, it does help if you just let it cool down a little bit, okay? Especially because it will be incredibly um, hot as well, especially that cheese. Um, so, yeah, just make sure that you uh, let it really um, cool down because you will burn your mouth. Cheese is good, but molten cheese is not good. <laughs> so, yeah. How are we getting on? Your dog Clea is going mad. She's salivating in anticipation. Oh, she's not getting any of it. <laughs> what kind of dog do you have? Jackie, are you enjoying it? You said that it's insane. My nose pin's just fallen off. Let me put that on the side. That wasn't supposed to happen. Let's pretend that didn't happen. Okay. Are you ready for the grand reveal? Are you ready? Because it looks pretty amazing. Okay. Yes. Look at that epic cheese skin. Can you hear that? Can you hear that? <laughs> I'm not exaggerating here. That's how you get that gorgeous crispy skin. Patrick, you've done the third. Did you do the cheese skin? Okay, right now, ideally, if I wasn't doing a live, I'd let this calm down for a bit. Okay. Um, I will pop another sandwich on whilst I do this. But I am going to start chopping this and cutting it in half. So next one's on. Low and slow, nice low heat. Okay, so let's go in for the, the, uh, the cutting. <gasps> Sounds so good! Okay, you ready? Oh, I can feel it's going down into the soft potato, the cheesiness on the inside. Oh wow, this is looking incredible. It feels amazing. Yes, look how good that is. So the cheese is ooey gooey on the inside. That amazing crispness on the outside. Um, and that is one heck of a sandwich. That's dinner done. But you've also learned three recipes at once. Okay, so I'm going to pop it on my plate here. I'm going to style it up for you, make it look good. Okay, and in India, when you go to the street sides, um, it's actually served um, with a little bit of tomato ketchup. And I'm also going to have a little dollop of green chutney here as well, just on the side. Because it looks good. And it's nice to kind of dip into it. Not that you need it, but it does just make it look really nice. And it's just a nice dipping sauce on the side. So there we have it, guys. Um, you have your wonderful, amazing Bombay masala sandwich. Crisp, cheesy, beautiful golden skin. You can hear that. Um, gorgeous spicy potatoes with a tempered mustard seeds, that lovely mustard, um, lovely uh, melted cheese, tomatoes, the red onion, and of course my extra chilies with some chaat masala. Grab one of those, dip it into your sauce, and let me know what you think. Um, Amanda, you said you've already <laughs> eaten yours. <laughs> what do you think? Let me know. Please, please, please this time. Let me um, see some photos before you demolish them. Um... I'm going to eat mine for an early dinner, I think, tonight. The chutney, someone's just asked, how long will it last for? So it will last for a good couple of weeks in the fridge, providing that you don't, you know, mess around with dirty spoons, just use a clean spoon every time. You can freeze this as well. Keeps in the fridge for a good couple of weeks, though. Um, amazing as a dipping sauce, poppadoms. Um, yeah, lots of different things. Jill, if you um, wait for this video to end and we watch the video, this is a coriander and mint chutney. Um, super fresh, spicy. Thank you very much for joining everyone. Please take a photo, pop it on the Spice Club page. We're on Instagram at the Spice Club. Uh, we're on Twitter at the Spice Club. And also, if you are interested in learning how to cook 
of regional Indian foods. If you ever come to one of my classes, we travel around India. So each class is based around a certain type of Indian micro cuisine. So we do classes like Mumbai street food. We do a Kashmiri um, cookery class. We do a, a Feast Like Kings Mughlay class. We do a Bengali class, a South Indian class. So um, if you're interested, we, our cookery school doors are now closed, obviously, given the climate that we're in, but sign up to the mailing list. So I've pinned a comment at the top here of the chat, if you have a look, you can see, and um, that'll take a link to the website. So click on either Manchester or Birmingham, whichever you prefer. And then at the bottom of the page is the ma mailing list sign up form. So make sure you sign up. I'm sending out updates on new recipes on there. I'm sending out updates of when my homemade guru masala and spice blends are up. So I do those in batches. So if you're on the mailing list, you get first dibs on those. Um, and yeah, lots of just inspiring recipes and information on new classes. Guys, I have an announcement to make. I won't be here next Friday. I'm not doing a class next Friday, but I will be back the following Friday. I will be releasing a recipe, however, on my blog, spicediary.com. So, um, yeah, stay posted for that. And this full written, written recipe will be up on spicediary.com tomorrow. Um, someone just asked a quick question. Denise, how to heat up later? These are amazing room temperature as well. In fact, I think they get better as they cool down. You can keep them in the oven. You can microwave them. It's fine if it's just for yourself. It does still keep the crisp skin as well. So yeah, thank you so much for tuning in, especially those of you who have been tuning in from week one. And those of you who've just come in as well, just thank you so much. I've been receiving some amazing photos of your food. And if you have any questions on any dishes, Indian cookery wise or spice related or spice storage or anything like that, please, please, please feel free to send me a message on Instagram or my email address is monica at spiceclubuk.com i'm here to help you guys especially whilst we're all at home together let's connect let's share um it just makes these days go by a little bit easier i think um so yeah i'll see you in a couple of weeks stay connected with me on social media enjoy your sandwiches and please send me photos of these before you demolish them i want to see your recreations um but yeah let's keep in touch guys thank you so much i will see you in a couple of weeks have a lovely weekend. There is a little link to my online um, tip jar, by the way. Always appreciated. Um, but yeah, have a little look on there. Just helps me to fund future lessons um, if you want to donate to that. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Another wonderful class. And I shall see you next time. All right. Lots of love. Bye-bye.